Praise the Lord. We're here today in Woodstock, Virginia, in the Shenandoah Valley, preaching to you from Matthew. Matthew, chapter 5. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 43. Matthew, chapter 5, 43. Jesus says, You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his sun to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publican so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So loving your enemies is perfection, to be perfect. Now was there anything wrong with hating your enemies? No. For Jesus says, he quotes the Old Testament, Ye have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Let's turn. Let's turn to Psalm, David, Psalm 139, Psalm 139, Psalm 139, Psalm 139 says, Psalm 139, verse 20, For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? I hate them with the perfect hatred, David says. So there's nothing wrong with hating your enemies. But Jesus says to be perfect, to be perfect, to be as your Father in heaven who is perfect. So what does that mean to be perfect in regarding loving and hating? To not only hate your enemies as David hated his enemies who hated God, the wicked, for the wicked are the enemies of God in their minds, as Paul wrote, enemies in your mind through wicked works but perfection to be perfect as your father in heaven how Jesus says regarding loving and hating is to love also to love ye your enemies to love ye your enemies let's turn let's turn let me find it here let's turn to James James, chapter 2, verse 8. James, chapter 2, verse 8. James, chapter 2, verse 8. James 2, 8. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. So to love your neighbor... To love your neighbor is to do well, is to be perfect. To love your enemy is to be perfect. How do you love somebody you hate? How do you love somebody you hate? Let's turn. Let's turn. Job. Job. Chapter 42, verse 6. Job 42, 6, Job says, let's read verse 5. I have heard of thee, Job says, speaking of God, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. To love your enemies, to love those who hate God, to love those who you hate with a perfect hatred, is to first 
First, hate yourself. First, abhor yourself. First, abhor what you are as a wicked sinner. Abhor yourself and repent in dust and ashes. Hate yourself first. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36. I abhor myself, Job said. Therefore I repent in dust and ashes. Ezekiel 36, verse 31. Ezekiel 36, verse 31. Then shall ye remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. So you can hate, you can hate your enemies, but first, before you love them, you have to be able to hate yourself, to loathe yourself, to abhor yourself. What does that mean, Leviticus? If you hate yourself and you repent, then you repent, repent in dust and ashes, Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 17, excuse me, chapter 19, Leviticus 19, verse 17, Leviticus 19, verse 17. So first hate yourself. Why do I need to hate myself first, preacher? So first you can hate yourself and then you can repent. You can abhor yourself. You can repent. You can repent. And if you repent from your wicked way, then Leviticus 19, verse 17, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your neighbor in your heart, but you shall in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So you can hate, you can hate your enemies because of their wickedness, but you can be perfect as God and you can also love your enemies as Jesus commands. Love ye your enemies. Don't just hate them, but love them. Love them and not suffer sin upon them. Your neighbor can be your enemy. But you shall rebuke your neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So how can you love your neighbor as yourself if you haven't hated yourself yet? If you don't love yourself? First, you've got to hate yourself, your wicked self, before you can even love yourself who's not wicked and how can you rebuke your neighbor's sin if you're still sinning if you're still wicked so first you've got to hate yourself and when you hate yourself you'll repent and you won't be that old self and then you can love yourself and if you love yourself as a child of God if you can love yourself then you can Love your neighbor as yourself because you first hated yourself, you first abhorred yourself, you first loathed yourself, and you repented. You repented. So if you repented, you're not that person anymore. And now you can love yourself because you're not that person anymore. You're not wicked. You're a child of God. Let's turn. And if you can love yourself, then you can love your enemies as yourself. You can love thy neighbor as thyself. For these days, when the days of iniquity abounding, more than likely than not, your neighbor is going to be your enemy because your neighbor is going to be in sin. Iniquity abounds today. Let's turn. Let's turn. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. 
Paul says, now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrow to repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Repentance. Repentance. And what happens after you repent? For behold, this selfsame thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort. What carefulness it wrought in you. Yea, what clearing of yourselves. Yea, what indignation. Yea, what fear. Yea, what vehement desire. Yea, what zeal. Yea, what revenge. In all these things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter absolutely against wickedness absolutely against the thing that you repented of godly sorrow what carefulness it wrought in you yea what clearing of yourselves yea what indignation what fear what vehement desire what zeal what revenge the enemies of God are the wicked and to love your enemy is to love him the way you love yourself to not suffer him to be wicked, but to rebuke his wickedness and not suffer sin upon him. Jonah, Jonah was commanded to go preach to Nineveh, the great city full of wickedness. And Jonah chapter four, verse nine, and God said to Jonah, doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. Jonah was commanded of God to go preach to that wicked city, Nineveh, and that wicked city, Nineveh, repented. And God spared Nineveh, but Jonah was angry because Jonah hated them. Jonah hated them. But God says, Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, nor madest it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? So you got to be careful. The devil will try to get you to hate your enemy with an unjust hatred, an imperfect hatred. Jesus says, be perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. David said, I've hated them with a perfect hatred. The only way you can hate your enemy with a perfect hatred and be perfect as your Father which is in heaven is perfect, Nineveh is that wicked city. Well, what did God do for Nineveh? God sent them a preacher. God said, should I destroy Nineveh, that great city? That great city with six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and also much cattle, Jonah? God hates the wicked. David hated his enemies with a perfect hatred. And you've got to hate your enemies with a perfect hatred. And the way you do that is by loving your enemies. Loving your enemies and not suffering their sin upon them. You can't just go out and hate your enemies. No, what grace have ye, Jesus says. What thank have ye? That word thank is grace in the, in the Greek, charis. What grace have ye? What thank have ye? If you just love those who love you back, if you just lend to those who you hope to gain. Should I not spare Nineveh Jonah? Jonah hated his enemies, but Jonah didn't love his enemies. So Jesus teaches to love your enemies. To love those you hate those I hate those who hate you David said speaking of those who hate God enemies of God Nineveh was God's enemy their wickedness has come up before me God said let's turn Matthew 18 33 Matthew chapter 18 verse 33 shouldest not thou verse 32 then his Lord after that he had called him said unto him O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt 
because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou have also had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? Sure, you can hate those who hate God, but what about you? You gotta hate yourself. You gotta hate yourself so you can repent and clear yourself. Yea, what clearing, Paul said. What indignation, what vehement desire, what zeal, what revenge. No, I'm not that person. I'm not that person. I hate that person. Let's turn. Luke chapter 6. And if you hate yourself first, Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Then you can love yourself who's been cleared. And if you can love yourself, then you can love your enemies. You can love your neighbor who's your enemy as yourself. Let's turn. Luke chapter 6, verse 35. Or let's read verse 34, verse 32. For if you love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? What grace have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have ye? What grace have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners and receive as much again. So there's a difference between the saint and the sinner. Jesus says sinners do that. So what does that make you if you're still a sinner? What grace have ye? But love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Romans, Romans chapter 5, verse 6. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That's you. He died for you. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us. God commended his love toward his enemies. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom now we have received the atonement. You've been justified. You've been justified. You've been reconciled. So now you're worthy. Now you can love yourself because you repented. You abhorred yourself in dust and ashes. You loathe yourself and Christ forgave you. And now you're justified. Yea, what vehement desire, what clearing of yourselves, what indignation against your old self. What zeal you have now. What revenge. I'm not that person anymore. I hate that person, but now I love this new person who I am. Justified. I love myself. And now I love myself so I can love my enemies, so I can love my neighbor as myself, who's my enemy in these last days. I can love myself because I'm a new creature. I'm justified. I'm not that old person who I loathe and abhor. We've received the atonement. We've been cleared. So if we've been cleared, then how can we be a sinner if Jesus Christ says, what thank have ye, for even sinners do the same. He makes a difference there between the sinner and who we are. You've got to do grace. You've got to do grace. Jesus says, if you do love, do something, love your enemy. If you don't do that, what grace have ye? 
all these people that say you don't have to do anything to get grace. Well, you got to love your enemies. You got to do good to them. Let's turn. So you got to do, you got to do things for grace because Jesus Christ commands you to. Let's turn. Colossians. Colossians. But that's why people won't do. That's why people won't rebuke sin because they're still sinners. People won't fulfill the royal law. As James says, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well, James says. Let's turn Colossians chapter 2. But you got to hate yourself first, then you got to repent, be a new creature that you can love. That you can love because you've been justified, you've been reconciled, you're not an enemy of God anymore. You've received the atonement because Christ died for the ungodly. And now you can go out and hate his enemies with a perfect hatred, which means you hate them for their wickedness and their rebellion against God, but you love them enough to tell them, let's turn, and to do good to them, to lend, to greet. Hello. For if you only greet those who love you, what reward have you? What thank have you? Communicate. Jesus ate with them. He sat amongst tax collectors and sinners and publicans. Look at him, he sits with publicans and sinners. The Pharisees who hated their enemies, but didn't love their enemies. Perfect. Be perfect, Jesus says. Let's turn. Let's turn. Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. I mean, verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So walk ye in him. Have you, as you've received him, the justification, the reconciliation, the atonement, the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. Walk like this. Walk in him, in his spirit, in that spirit of hate and love of compassion on the ignorant and them that are out of the way. For he looked upon the multitudes and was moved with compassion for them. Not as a Pharisee, only hating, only loving those who love them back. Hey, Rabbi, Rabbi, how you doing, Rabbi? Standing in the market, loving greetings in the marketplace and in the streets. Bless them that hates you. Let's turn. Colossians chapter 2, 6, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Thank God I'm not that person anymore. Thank God I've got the love of God in my heart. Thank God I can love myself because I'm worthy now. I'm worthy. I'm justified. I cleared myself by faith in Christ. What zeal, what clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what revenge, what desire, what vehement desire for righteousness for the Son of God. And you can love yourself. You can love yourself because you're worthy. You're worthy now. You've been reconciled. You've been washed clean no matter what you did. You've been washed clean. It's not one foot in sin and one foot in grace. It's not one foot in love and one foot in an unrighteous hatred of your neighbor. Now you can't despise your neighbor as, jo as Jonah despised Nineveh. Hating him for being who you used to be because you used to hate yourself before you repented. And if you've abhorred yourself if you've loathed yourself, if you've cleared yourself, if you've been justified and reconciled and the, the sin's been atoned for, now you can love yourself. And if you love yourself, you got full of grace, you are worthy, you are going to make it because you're walking in Christ as he taught you to be perfect. You've heard that it's been said of old time to hate your enemies, but I tell you to love your enemies. 
Love your enemies. Let's turn. Galatians. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. You're dead. That person who you loathed, that person who you abhorred, who you repented in dust and ashes for that wicked person, for that sinner. If you love them which love you, what grace have ye? For even sinners do the same. If you've abhorred yourself, hated yourself, loathed yourself, repented, crucified yourself with Christ, I am crucified with Christ. I'm dead, Paul says. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Not I, it's Christ in you. It's Christ in you who loves his enemies, who loves those he hates. I saw a video on YouTube, I posted it on my channel, of a father asking his son, it was a pastor, I guess, or a, a Christian man, asking his son questions. And his little son was probably about seven or eight years old. He still had a very high voice, like a little boy. And you could tell that he was listening to his father and he was playing, playing along with his father. His father was asking him questions about God. And then when his father got to the question, he said, now son, do you think that God loves us or hates us? And the little boy said, mm, both, amen. From the mouth of babes, both the little innocent boy said, he loves us and he hates us, that little child said. And of course the father said, no, 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 he only loves us. The father doesn't understand the doctrine. The father doesn't understand perfect hatred. The father doesn't understand love and hate of God. The father doesn't understand the perfect. Be therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Galatians 2.20 do you think God loves us or hates us, son? Mm, both, he said. Amen. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ. God hates that old man. That's why he crucified that old man. Cursed be everyone that hangs on the tree. God curses the old man. You can't be your old man. You can't be a sinner anymore. That sinner is cursed. He's an enemy of God. God hates him. So Paul says, I crucify him with Christ. He's dead, mortified, murdered. Nevertheless, I live, yet not me, not I. Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, his enemy, and gave himself for me, his enemy. His enemy, his friend, who turned to be his enemy. Christ died for him. Christ even died for Judas. Judas didn't receive it. I pray you will. Jonah, Jonah, chapter 4, verse 9. Jonah 4, 9. The devil will tempt the saints with this hatred of enemy. Jonah chapter 4, verse 9. Jonah chapter 4, verse 9. And God said to Jonah, Doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry, even unto death. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, nor madest it grow, which came up in a night, and perished in a night. Should I not spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Greater love has no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends loving those he hates. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. Let's sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. 
Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord.